Commissioner Angie Taylor texted me. Uh, she said that she'd been praying that God gave her a scripture. Isn't that funny? Angie can still speak from God even when she's not here. Uh, <laughs> Hebrews chapter 10, I was reading on the phone. <clears throat> Actually, chapter 6, verse 10. It says, God is not unjust. He will, for, he will not forget how hard you have worked for Him and how you've shown your love to Him by caring for other believers as you still do. Our great desire is that you will keep on loving others as long as life lasts in order to make certain that what you hope for will come true. That you will not become spiritually dull and indifferent. Instead, you'll follow the example of those who are going to inherit God's promises because of their faith and endurance. For example, there was God's promise to Abraham. Since there was no one greater to swear by God took an oath in his own name, saying, I will certainly bless you, and I will multiply, multiply your descendants beyond number. Then Abraham waited patiently, and he received what God had promised. Now when people take an oath, they call on someone greater than themselves to hold them to it. And without any question, that oath is binding, but God also bound himself with an oath so that those who received the promise could be perfectly sure that he would never change his mind. So God has given both his promise and his oath, and these two things are unchangeable because it's impossible for God to lie. Therefore, whoever have fled to him for refuge can have great confidence as we hold to the hope that lies before us. This hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls, it leads us through the curtain into God's inner sanctuary. Jesus has already gone in there for us. He's become our eternal high priest in the order of Melchizedek. And I'll be honest, you know, this, this morning, I'm, I'm jumping right into my sermon with this word uh, from, from Angie, but uh, I started a series a couple weeks ago called Reset. I better think before I name series, Lord. Uh, we're kind of doing a reset right now. Um, with just the number of people that are that are going through some sickness. And I know that I know that God spoke to me at the beginning of this year. This was a year of fulfillment. This is a year of salvation. I know it with certainty that that's the, the word that God gave me as a pastor. You know, I know that, that, that when we preached on fasting, God is, God is bringing a discipline into my life, into our lives, that is going to transform the body of Christ. I know that God desired for us to be reset eternally, to reset our lives so they would be aligned with Him. I know that God is working all this stuff. And how many like when you know what God's doing and your reality matches up with what you know? It's a lot easier then. It's a lot easier to know that, that this is a year of fulfillment when everything's going great and, and we're not dealing with viruses and all that fun stuff. And then all of a sudden, things change and all of a sudden, things seem different. I mean, I got to one, I didn't want to answer my phone this week. Every time I saw someone from church was calling, I knew what the call was going to mean. Pastor, I got tested. But I know that my hope is in Him. And I know that's the anchor for my soul. And I know that God has this church in this moment for a reason. I know that all things work together for the good of those who love Him and who are called according to His purpose. I know that God is doing this. And so today, I'm actually going to kind of pause from my reset series. I mean, we're resetting ourselves. We need to hear about it by now. And I'm going to pre preach probably one of the more rudimentary sermons that you're going to hear. I'm going to preach on a, break, on a very basic discipline that I think many in the body of Christ are forgetting right now. I mean, many of us are just forgetting about it completely, and God is desiring to do something. Here's a little picture I, I came up with. This thing is not working yet. Let's see if you can make it work. She's not making it work yet either. So anyway, while she's working on that, I'm just going to talk about some stuff. 
The reality is I feel like everybody in this moment, whether it's because of what's happening in our personal lives, in our church lives, in our, in our community, in our nation, in our world, we've got all these things that are around us that are bringing pressure in our lives. And I've talked to many people in the midst of, of this season, many people in the midst of this moment, and they feel like there's so much pressure from all these other things. I mean, they watch the news, or they watch the elections, or they watch this or that, and, and they wonder where can they go or what can they do. I mean, literally talking to people who, who feel helpless right now. Because for some reason, for, for well, I know what the reason is, but the reality of the moment is we're allowing all that has surrounded us to influence us. So me or you, believers in Christ, we're being more influenced by our surroundings than we are influencing our surroundings. Does that make sense? I had a really cool picture with emojis and it had different faces and they were all pointing arrows at the middle emoji and that's really what I feel like we're living in. There's all these different things. Hey, we just shut it down and then started back up from Dropbox. Um, and, and so what I feel like is that many of us, we, we, we've allowed, whether it's social media, whether it's politics, whether it's work, whether it's the news, whether it's sickness, whether it's problems, to begin to influence me. So suddenly, who's caught themselves there at some point where Facebook was affecting you more than Facebook? Or I think God was. That you were affecting Facebook. Where the news, you had to turn it off because when you watched it, you became depressed and frustrated. Or the, the situations or the circumstance or the phone just kept ringing and people kept on saying. And you watch yourself as you become more influenced by what's happening around you than truly being who God has called us to be. I believe that God has called you and I not to be influenced by what's around us, but to influence what's around us. And we allow ourselves to be more influenced than we are to become influencers. There's my picture. See that? That was good. See what I wanted to see all that? So here's what I say we've been living. And, and here's what I believe God wants us to live in. Whether it comes to our children's sickness, weakness, being tired, drunkenness, or addictions, or, or being in danger. I believe that God wants to use you and I to be influencers in the midst of those moments. In the, the rudimentary practice, the basic reminder that I want us to look at is God has called us to pray. I've talked to lots of people. I've spent lots of moments with people who say, Pastor, I don't feel like there's anything I can do right now. Feel helpless. I don't know that there's anything I can change. And I want to tell you that we have to truly grasp the power that is in being a praying people. There's a little story I got. I, I was going to do this earlier, but I got distracted with my PowerPoint. Um, it's supposed to be an introduction. Now it's kind of a segue, I guess. There was a kid, and well, mom and her kids went to a dinner in, or a diner, and they were having dinner at the diner. There you go. That's how I say that. And they ordered their food and they were getting ready to eat. Mom asked her six year old boy to pray. And so, you know, he was nervous. Mom asked him to pray out loud. And he said, All right, Mom. And so he bowed his head. He said, God is great. God is good. Thank you, Lord, for this food. And God, uh, thank you even more if Mom bought us some ice cream when this meal was done. And liberty and justice for all men. And he's done good because he prayed in, in this restaurant. Well, there was this, this lady behind him that overheard this. This six-year-old boy praying, and, and she said loudly, what has this world come to? We got kids praying to God for ice cream. And this little six-year-old boy just began to weep before his mom. And he, he looked at his mom and said, Mom, did I, did I mess up? Did I, did I pray the wrong thing? Did I make God mad? 
And she's consoling him. And this elderly gentleman came over and he, he patted him on the head. And he said, son, don't worry about it. I know for a fact that God heard your prayer. And I know for a fact that, that, that God loved your prayer. And maybe, just maybe that woman never had ice cream from God because she never asked for ice cream from God. And so they ate their meal, and mom, because she was trapped at this point, had to buy him uh, ice cream. So she bought the kid ice cream, and she set that ice cream down before, in front of her son, and he picked that bowl of ice cream up, and he carried it to that lady, and he said in front of her, and said, God, I wanted you to have some ice cream. And see, the whole point of that story is I wonder how much we're missing because we're not asking. I wonder how much God desires to do, but we haven't sought him to do what he desires to do. We haven't been intentional about praying to Him, asking for Him. And I, and I just wonder why. What's the problem? Because I want to tell you that prayer is absolutely powerful. Your prayer is powerful. If you want to know what you can do when you feel all this outside influence coming on you, if you want to know something that you can do in the middle of this when, when we're dealing with COVID and we're dealing with these things, I will tell you that prayer is absolutely powerful. This is James chapter 5. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Anyone among you sick? Let them call on the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer often in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they've sinned, they'll be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful. And in fact, that's one of my favorite verses in Scripture. I know you're not supposed to have favorites like kids and stuff, but we all do, you know. Um, but anyway, um, that's like my favorite verse. One of my favorite verses in Scripture. And every kid's thinking right now, was that a favorite or not? I know I was. Don't worry about it. You know, my mom and dad, but anyway... My brothers won't listen to this either, so I can say whatever I want. Mom, mom, like, but they will. Um, anyway, um, Elisha was a human being, even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again, he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. I want to tell you, I believe some people don't pray because they don't think their prayer is effective. I think some people don't pray because they think their prayer isn't doing much. The scripture, that's in James, he says the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. And so then you might say, well, I'm not a righteous person because I can't do everything right. Well, the reality from scripture is righteous person, we have been made righteous by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. So if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you've accepted the promise of forgiveness that comes through the cross of Jesus Christ, then you are absolutely a righteous person. If you are a righteous man or woman, your prayer is powerful and effective. I'm going to say that because I think sometimes the reason we don't pray is because we don't feel like we're very effective. If you've accepted who you are in Christ, if you've accepted what God has done for you, then your prayer is powerful and effective. The example we have was Elijah. He was a human being. Let's say he was a prophet. We're looking at him as a human being right now. He prayed and it didn't rain for three and a half years. He prayed again and then it rained. Man. What don't we have? What are we lacking? Because we're not praying. What are we missing? Because we're not recognizing how powerful and effective our prayers truly are. I have people tell me all the time, I don't know how to pray. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. I want to tell you that your prayer, the words that you speak to God, are powerful and effective. chapter 10 says, for though we live in the world, we don't wage war as the world does. 
The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments in every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Your prayer is a weapon. It's a spiritual weapon that God has given you that is powerful and effective, that can take captive arguments and pretensions, the things that set themselves up against the knowledge of God. How powerful are your prayers? Mark 11 says, Have faith in God. Jesus answered, Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, Go throw yourself in the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believes what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them, so that your Father in heaven may forgive your sins. I'm going to ask a question. Are prayers powerful and effective? Are your prayers powerful and effective? Yeah. Okay, so we're, we're all agreeing that we're aligning ourselves with the Word of God. You know, Ephesians chapter 6, where it talks about the full armor of God, when we talk about spiritual warfare, and we talk about the different things, it, it, it ends with the verse in 18 that says, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert, all, always keep on praying for the Lord's people. Your prayers are powerful and effective. Amen? I'm going to just keep talking a little bit because if your prayers are powerful and effective, I think it's important for us to recognize that, that, that God hears us when we pray. Now, I'm just doing this. This might seem silly. Like I said, this is, this is basic stuff. But as a pastor, I'm wondering if people know their prayers are powerful and effective, then they maybe don't know if God's hearing them. Well, we hear this verse a lot, especially when elections happen. Uh, the Second Chronicles it says, When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or command locusts to devour the land, or send a plague among my people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, and see my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. What do they say? If they'll humble themselves and pray, I will hear from heaven. And I will forgive their sins. And I will heal their land. And now my people will be open and my ears will be attentive to the prayers offered in, in this place. Proverbs chapter 15 literally says, God hears the prayers of the righteous. So, if prayer is powerful and effective, and God absolutely hears it, then why don't we expect for something to change? Why do we struggle to engage this discipline? Why do we struggle to become that, that influencer rather than being influenced by what's happening around us? First John chapter 5 says, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to His will, He... Are you confident that God hears you? This is the confidence that we have. That if we, if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And we know that if He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we've asked of Him. How simple is this connection? Our prayers are powerful and effective. When I pray, God hears me. When God hears me, He does something. Amen? Sometimes I think we forget. Sometimes I think we get overwhelmed. Sometimes I think we convince ourselves that God's word isn't true and our prayers aren't doing anything. That maybe, maybe just maybe God's not hearing me. 
Or maybe God hurt me, but he chose to ignore. I want to, I want to place in your hands what I believe is the most powerful tool we have in this moment. I want to, to give you, I mean, if I, if I had to view a spiritual weapon and I was giving out swords today or, or guns or, or grenades or something along those lines, I want you to take with you the most powerful weapon that you have in this moment. The way that you will no longer be influenced by the world, but you will influence the world is through your prayer life. It will be through the time you spend crying out to God, crying out for the sick, crying out for the weary, crying out for the broken, crying out the law, crying out for, 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 for the addicted, whatever it takes. That's how you begin to influence what's happening around you. And I genuinely believe that's what God is calling the church to in this moment. I believe that's what God desires for us to do in this moment. And that's what I want us to do together. And just, you guys can come forward. I don't know if you want to get near me or not, but I think it'll be all right. Um, but, but I want us to spend some time praying. And I want to look at a prayer that Jesus prayed. Because remember the disciples, at one point they said, Hey, Lord, teach us to pray. We don't want to be like the, right, the, the hypocrites. We don't want to be like them. And he, and he said, Lord, teach us to pray. And this is what Jesus said. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we've also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. What's the pattern that Jesus gave us in prayer? This sin is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Who is God? Who is God? He's our Father, right? We're identifying who we're praying to. When we pray in just a moment, I want us to think about who is God? God's love. Who is God? God is creator. Who is God? He needs someone. 
one that's going to cry out to God on his behalf. That's what we're called to do. Walt spent time last week talking about fulfillment. He, he shared that he talked about the promises that God has spoken to our church body. God's not a liar. So why don't we pray that God fulfills his promises? I'm going to have us pray together. And I'm going to encourage you to spend some time in prayer yourself. I say this in the course. Father, I come to you this day. God Almighty, Creator, the one who is light and is love, the one who forgives, the one who provides. Gotta cry out for our body today, the body of Christ here in Crawford. I cry out for those who are sick. I cry out for those who aren't feeling well. Lord, I lift up Jerry Lott's speech today in the name of Jesus Christ, and I pray that you would be with him. I pray for healing in his body. I ask God that you would help him to know the healing power of Jesus Christ right now. For Dwayne Sands, God, the same thing. For the others, God, that are, that are dealing with the virus, God, I pray for healing in the name of Jesus Christ. God, I take captive those thoughts, those arguments and pretensions that set themselves up against the knowledge of God. I acknowledge that our prayers this morning are powerful and effective. And God, I pray that you would continue to work in lives. I pray for the body of Christ, Lord, that we would grow in you. Pray against the things that distract us. That stuff that so easily entangles us. We've looked at Hebrews, God, and that scripture in Hebrews. I pray, God, that we could throw that stuff off in the name of Jesus Christ and we could walk in forgiveness. Lord, if there are those who are struggling with addictions or challenges or sin, God, that they can't seem to let go of, I pray that you would break those chains, that you would loose them from sin. God, for our community, Lord, I ask that we would see people that, that would come to know you as their Lord and Savior. I pray for opportunities to demonstrate your love. I pray, God, that you give us abilities and moments where we can show the fullness of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And for your promises, God, for every one of them, pray you would make a way. God, I pray that you would make a way even when we don't see the way. God, I pray for ice cream. I pray for unexpected blessings, unexpected demonstrations of your love and your goodness in our lives. moment and maybe God has placed someone in your heart or situation or circumstance. Just take some time and, 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 and pray to God this morning, believing that He can, believing that He will, that He is. And let today be the day of influence. Where no longer are you more influenced by what surrounds you but you begin to see God influencing what's around you through your life, through your obedience, through your prayers, through your love. Your prayers are powerful and effective, amen? Your prayers can influence the world around you, amen? Let's use them. Not just for a few moments on a Sunday morning, but let's let that become part of who we are. The prayer of the righteous person is powerful and effective. I put the offering tray in the back. I'm going to pray for that. God, I thank you for uh, just what you've done in our church and what you're doing. I pray that you would bless those who give. You have a heart to give today.
help us to be wise stewards of what you've given us as a church body. In Jesus' name. The Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. May he turn his face towards you and grant you his peace. And may you influence more than you are influenced. Amen. Be blessed.